These are 14-year-old Katya and 17-year-old Lina. Together, they spent four years in a bunker underground, and this is Viktor Mohov who put them there and did whatever he wanted with their bodies every day. He made their life a living hell. When police found a secret bunker in western Russia, they were shocked. Two young girls were sitting 20 feet underground. They were absolutely exhausted and looked like all the women. One of the girls was eight months pregnant. They could hardly move because they had been stuck in a tiny bunker for several years without sunlight or proper nutrition. Moreover, almost every day a man came to them and used their bodies for his own satisfaction. It was incredible torture, real hell. When the girls were taken out of the bunker, they hardly realized they were now free. And after they came to their senses, they told their story. One of the girls, Katya Martinova, wrote a book many years later, where she told terrible details about life in the bunker. This story is so awful that it will shock even the most seasoned people. Therefore... Don't watch this video if you are under 18 or overly sensitive. This story began in September 2000, when 14-year-old Katya Martinova went to her first disco. She was a very young girl who went to school and still played with dolls. Katya was an ordinary girl from a typical family. She was born and raised in Ryazan, a small city in western Russia. Her mother was a saleswoman in a store. Her father worked at a factory. She also had an older sister. It was a happy and prosperous family that lived well and didn't know any problems. Perhaps that is why Katya was such a naive girl. She didn't know that there were evil people in the world who could cause pain and suffering to her. 14-year-old Katya was just a kid, but like many teenagers, she wanted to seem like an adult. That's why she was so happy when her friend invited her to the disco. 17-year-old Lina Samohina was her sister's best friend. They wanted to go to a disco together, but her sister wasn't at home, so Katya decided to go instead. She didn't tell her parents exactly where she was going. She said she was just going for a walk. Schoolgirl was excited to be at an adult disco for the first time. They met Lina in the evening and had a great time. At 10 p.m. it was time for the girl to go home. Back then most people didn't have mobile phones, so girls could not tell their parents where they were or ask them to take them. Therefore, they had to get home by public transport. However, it was difficult to get on the city trolley bus because of the crowd of people who also wanted to go back after the celebration. At that moment, a car stopped next to the girls. There were two men there who offered them a ride home. 17-year-old Lina agreed because she was glad to get back quickly. Katya decided to follow her. This reckless act will lead to dire consequences for the girls. They got into the car and said their address. However, they will not make it home that evening and their whole life will not be the same from that moment. The driver was an elderly man who was mostly silent. His name was Victor. Next to him was a young guy who introduced himself as Losha. They invited the girls to stop by the store and buy chocolate. The men joked and seemed very nice, so they didn't arouse any suspicion among the girls. The car stopped, Losha entered the store and brought the girls chocolates and a bottle of alcohol. They offered to drink and the girls agreed. 14-year-old Katya choked because she had never consumed alcohol before. Then she was given a bottle of water. The car moved on. At this moment Katya and Lena felt weak and exhausted. Victor suddenly said that he needed to see his sister. The girls could not resist because they did not have the strength to do so. Only later will they understand that the men mixed sleeping pills into their drinks. This allowed them to carry out their evil plan. The car arrived at some dubious place. Lersha took the half-asleep Katya out of the car and into the garage. 
Then Victor came there and ordered her to undress. The girl refused, but Victor threatened to set the dogs on her otherwise. Under the influence of solid substances, Katya could not resist, so she had to agree, and Victor became her first man on a dirty mattress in this garage. After that, he forced her to climb into the basement. The girl found herself in a tiny bunker. Then she thought that the next day the man would let her go home, and she could not imagine that this bunker would become her home for the next four years. At this time, her friend Lina was sleeping in the house. The maniac did the same thing to her as he did to Katya. Lina woke up from sleeping pills in the morning, and Victor brought her to the bunker to see her friend. Lina began to dress Katya to get them out of this terrible place, but Victor locked them there. They screamed and called for help, but no one heard them. The maniac came, threw some food and water into their bunker, and promised to release them one of these days. But the days passed and they were still locked up until they realized they were captured. For 14-year-old Katya and 17-year-old Lina, years of hell began. Victor came to their bunker and called them individually. He took them to another small room next to the main room and committed evil on a red cotton blanket. During the first days of their imprisonment, the girls tried to resist. They refused to submit to his will. Then Victor turned off their lights and in threatens to shut off the ventilation. The girls felt buried alive. The next time he came down with a knife and hit Lena with a hose. Seeing her confusion, he grabbed Katya and took her into the next room, where he satisfied himself on a red blanket. The girls didn't have the strength to fight. In the first days, they recovered from sleeping pills. After that, they had no power due to poor nutrition and lack of oxygen underground. He gave them very little food and water. There was no sewerage or running water in the bunker. The girls had to use a small bucket as a toilet. It quickly filled with waste, so Lina and Katya had to breathe in this terrible stench until Victor came and took it away. The girls spent days coming up with an escape plan. They wanted to attack him, but didn't have much in the bunker to do this. Victor left them just a tiny dull knife, a boiler, and an electric stove so that they could cook their own food. One day they decided to hit him with a hot frying pan, but they could never implement their plan because they realized they were too physically weak to defeat the strong man. They were afraid to anger him because they were in his complete power, deep underground. Victor often threatened to them that he could cut off their ventilation or fill the bunker with concrete. He could kill them and no one would know about it. Therefore, all they could do was simply obey his demands and fulfill all his dirty desires on the red blanket, to not anger him and at least get regular food and water. He came to them sometimes once every day, two or three days, every day or even several times a day, and every time he demanded only one thing, their bodies, he considered them his toys or maybe pets. Having received satisfaction on the red blanket, he left. At first, the girls thought the second man from the car would also come, but all this time Victor was the only one who came to them. Later, they learn that the young guy, Losha, who treated them to chocolate, was a woman named Yelena. She was Victor's accomplice who helped him carry out his evil plan. So, days, weeks and months passed. The more time passed, the more strength the girl lost. They didn't have the opportunity to wash themselves properly. Victor sometimes gave them a couple of buckets of water to clean themselves. However, this amount of water was not enough. Therefore, their bodies and hair were always sticky and dirty. Occasionally, Victor gave them new bed linen and some clothes. 
After several months in the bunker, the girls lost all will to resist and even stopped planning to escape. They knew that everything was useless, and all they dreamed of was to survive, so they fulfilled all the whims of the maniac. Victor became kinder to them, if we can call it that. He began to bring them more new things. For example, for the new year he brought them a bag of chocolates and various household items, a calm hygiene product and kitchen utensils. He also brought them playing cards. In addition, he gave Lina an English learn book and Katya a sketchbook and crayons. The girls found at least some hobby. Lina began to learn English and Katya began to draw. She always had a talent for this. Living in the bunker, she painted it dark, gloomy walls with cheerful pictures. This helped her maintain hope. One day a man brought them a stack of newspapers, and they first learned about him there. His name was Viktor Mohov. But who was he? At the time of the crime, Viktor was 50 years old. He was born and raised in the small town of Skopino in western Russia. For almost all his life, Viktor worked as a mechanic at a factory. He was considered one of the best workers in his enterprise. And in his youth, he seemed quite a nice guy. However, he never had good relationships with girls. Since childhood, Victor has been socially awkward and highly insecure. He married in his youth, but after three months, his wife left him for unknown reason. He never had serious relationships with women again. The only beloved woman in his life was his mother. They lived together almost their entire lives in a village house. She was a powerful, dominant woman who suppressed him in every possible way. This is why Victor may have become a mad maniac. Desperate to find a woman, he decided to do something terrible, build a secret bunker and put captives there. He catches his plan for many years. It took him three years to dig a bunker in his yard under the garage. The bunker was carefully camouflaged, making it very difficult to find. It was closed by a concrete safe door and located 20 feet underground, so screaming and calling for help while while inside was useless. Mohov equipped the bunker with everything necessary for the life of the captives. He installed electricity and ventilation there. Inside were two beds, a table, chairs and dishes. Victor committed his first kidnapping six months before he attacked Lina and Katya. It was another teenager, but she managed to escape. The girl didn't contact the police, and this incident became known only many years later. Subsequently, the maniac was more careful, so the two new victims had little chance of being saved. During the first months of their captivity, the girls' lives were terrible, but then it got even worse. Six months after being trapped, in an underground bunker, 17-year-old Lina realized she was pregnant. She begged Victor to let her go, but he could not allow this, because in this case he could be sent to prison. Therefore, Lina had to give birth to a child underground in unsanitary, terrible conditions without help or medicine. The pregnant teenager felt terrible, but this didn't stop Victor. He continued to call her into the next room and satisfy himself on the red blanket. When the birth was close, the maniac brought the girls a textbook on gynecology and obstetrics. 15-year-old Katya had to study this book to help her friend. The girl had only small scissors, cotton wool, hydrogen peroxide and the rags. Only thanks to a miracle, a healthy boy was born. The following day, their tormentor came to them. The news that he had a son didn't bother him at all. He only called Katya to satisfy his needs. Two weeks later, Victor demanded that the girls give them their baby, but they refused because they thought he wanted to kill him. 
As a result, the boy lived with them in a dirty bunker for almost two months. One day the girls woke up and realized the baby was missing. It turned out that Victor mixed sleeping pills into their water and stole the child. However, he saved the boy's life. The maniac left the baby at the entrance of an apartment building. On the one hand, Lena grieved for her son. The baby became a ray of hope in this tiny bunker. But on the other hand, she was glad he was free, could see daylight and received proper nutrition. An underground bunker is a terrible place for a baby. When Lena became pregnant a second time, the story repeated again. Katya helped her friend to bear the baby boy for the second time. A child lived with them for four months. After that, the girls themselves decided to give him to Victor. The maniac again left the child in a residential building. By the way, both boys ended up in foster care and never found out who their parents were. It was probably better for them this way. Just imagine what it's like to discover that your your father is a maniac and your mother is his prisoner and slave. As for Katya, she was lucky because she could not get pregnant. She entered the bunker as a 14-year-old girl and was not yet fully formed physically. At that time, she had not even started her period. Due to poor nutrition and lifestyle underground, Katya developed slowly. Therefore, in four years, she never became pregnant. Lena was less fortunate. She ended up in the bunker at 17 and was already a fully formed girl. After two births, she became pregnant for the third time. It was a nightmare for her. The girl was exhausted and thought she would not survive the third birth. At that time, Victor was already a little tired of his two captives. He simply became bored with them and began looking for a third victim. One day he brought a third bat into the bunker and ordered the girls to install a second tier above one of the beds. In addition, Victor lost his vigilance. He thought that his two captives were wholly broken and would never attempt to escape again. That's why one day he decided to take Katya out of the bunker and bring her into the house so that she could wash herself in the shower. He took her out again and told her to help him drug the third victim, a student who moved into Victor's house and rented a room. The maniac decided that she would be perfect for the role of the third slave. The girls realized that this was their chance for salvation. When Victor brought Katya to meet the third girl, Katya by that time had managed to write a letter in which she told about her situation and asked to contact the police. Katya secretly planted a note in the girls' things. That day Victor failed to carry out his plan to take a third concubine into his harem. Katya returned to the bunker and now she and Lena had only to wait. Will the girl see their letter? Will she go to the police? Their whole life depended on it. They could not believe that one day they heard unfamiliar voices. An unknown man looked inside the bunker and asked, Girls, are you alive? Katya and Lena were happy. For the first time in several years, they saw sunlight. In turn, the police who freed them were shocked. The girls were extremely pale and emaciated. Lena was eight months pregnant and could not even move. Viktor Mohov was arrested and sentenced to 17 years in prison. He was surprised when he heard his sentence. So much? I didn't kill them. I fed and maintained them at my own expense, he said. This maniac never felt guilty and he was convinced that he had done nothing wrong. By the way, his accomplice, Yelena, who looked like a man and helped him lure the girls into a trap, received five years in prison. Viktor Mohov's mother, who lived with him all this time, insisted that she had no idea that her son was holding two captives in the bunker. Was she telling the truth? Did she not have questions about why her son carried food and things into the bunker? Most likely she guessed. However, no one could prove her guilt, so she remained free.
What was the fate of the girls after four years of hell? Yelena Samohina gave birth to her third child. However, his fate is unknown. According to one information, the baby died. According to another, she abandoned him. It is known that Lina never tried to return the two boys she gave birth to in the bunker. Perhaps this is the right decision, in any case we cannot judge her. Today, one of these children is 20 years old, the second is 22, and they probably don't even know who their parents are. It was difficult for Lina to survive the years of hell with the maniac. She decided to forget everything and refused to talk to the press. It is known that she became an English teacher and never had any more children. Katya Martinova, who ended up in a bunker at 14, continued her studies at school. She found the strength to move on and even learned to trust men again. Katya gave birth to two children, a girl and a boy. Today she is married and quite happy. She gives interviews to journalists and does not hesitate to speak openly about her sad experience. Katya Martinova wrote the book Confession of a Dungeon Prisoner, which should morally help all women who have suffered violence. Katya Martinova is a fantastic woman who was able to survive all this horror and at the same time maintain faith in goodness. Despite the years of imprisonment, she remained a good person. Today she helps victims of violence. Sometimes she is in a bad mood, but when she remembers her years in the bunker, she realizes that the new problems are nothing. She encourages people to value life, freedom and moments of happiness. Surprisingly, having experienced absolute hell, she did not break and continued to live. I think many people have a lot to learn from this woman. Today Katya is 37 years old and Lina is 40. They tried to forget their terrible experience. However, they had to remember everything because two years ago Viktor Mohov was released from prison and even gave several interviews to journalists. We must admit that he is an absolutely moral person and does not understand his guilt. He never regretted his action. During the interview, he even joked that he needed to get involved with one of the girls again to help her give birth to a child. Looking into his shameless eyes, it is difficult to believe there is at least something human in him. Do you think he deserves to be free? It's all for today. Goodbye. And remember, evil is near.